Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Top 10 phrases you'll need for a date. <laughs> Also, I want to mention that I will speak as a woman inviting a man out. So all of those phrases will be addressed towards a male. Let's begin. Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Yeah, I think like dinner is a more mature kind of a date. I think it's either if you're more far along in your, like, your relationship like you're, maybe you're a bit more mature and you have more money, <laughs> um, but most people maybe will just go out for like a coffee or a beer. Would you like to hang out with me? Would you like to hang out with me? 
I think this is like a very kind of a, a vague, obscure kind of a way to ask somebody to do something with you. Like, it's nice to hang out, but, you know, be more specific. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to have frozen yogurt? Do you want to, like, buy a dress? <laughs> do you want to go to the movies? Like, you know, don't be so vague. Ata kol kach hamud. You're so cute. Ata kol kach hamud. You're so cute. So in Hebrew, when we say the equivalent of cute, which is chamud, it's kind of like friend zoning somebody, as a matter of fact. It's not like, mm, cute, like he's handsome, like in English. It's just like saying cute to a dog. And there's also a saying a guy would say, call a dog cute, like I'm not cute, I'm a man. So if you're a woman and you're telling a guy he's cute, that's not a compliment. <laughs> You look great. Atanirene edar. You look great. You know, sometimes like when well, you see your dad, he just comes over and he really looks sharp. It's like, oh, you look great. Yeah. Zaya erv nedar. That was a great evening. Zaya erv nedar. That was a great evening. Don't say it if you just had like an okay kind of a time. Because the word nehedar in Hebrew, it means actually like, you know, great, like fantastic. And if you really had a fantastic time and you're not trying to like play it cool and you really wanted him to know that you had a good time, um, then, then say that. But if you're trying to be cool, you know, say something maybe a bit more mild. Anitkasher alecha. I'll call you. Anitkasher alecha. I'll call you. Now guys, especially guys, don't say it if you don't mean it. Just say, it was great seeing you. Okay, bye. That's good enough. Anitkasher alecha. Baita. I'll drive you home. אני אסיע אותך הביתה. I'll drive you home. Not if you had drinks. If you had dinner, you know, a soft drink, then sure, you know, drive him home. Why not? Show him your driving skills. באיזו שעה אתה רוצה להיפגש מחר? What time shall we meet tomorrow? באיזו שעה אתה רוצה להיפגש מחר? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Um, again, this is like very useful when you just... We, you said tomorrow, but you don't really know exactly when. Is it seven? Is it eight? Is it eight? And then just be more specific and ask him what time. Can I see you again? Can I see you again? Yeah, it's like a very direct thing to ask. I don't think I've ever asked it anybody. And you don't really have to. You just can like, yeah, okay, I'll call you or, you know, or call me. If it's really important to you and, you know, you're not playing any games and you're all being like really straightforward and simple, then you might say, Can I see you again? Shall we go somewhere else? Shall we go somewhere else? You know, if the bar is too loud or, you know, maybe smelly from cigarettes or maybe the restaurant you wanted to go to is there's a bit of a line um, and you're thinking, okay, let's not waste our time and maybe you can find some place that's more comfortable, then you'd ask that, like, uh, Top Hebrew phrases. These are very useful phrases you're going to hear a lot when you come to Israel, so uh, make sure to memorize them. Okay, let's start. Shalom. Hello. Shalom literally means peace. But we use it also as a greeting. Shalom. Manishma. How are you? Uh, that's a very casual way of asking how are you. And it literally means what is heard. Like, yeah, like what have you been up to? What's going on with you? Manishma. Toda. Thanks. And probably the only way to say it. We don't have like thanks or thank you. It's just toda. Bevakasha. Please. Bevakasha, it means please, but it can also mean there you go. So you can say, Efshar lekabel maim, bevakasha? Can I have water, please? And when you give someone water, you can also say, Bevakasha, there you go. Slicha, excuse me. Uh, it means excuse me or sorry. So when you like push through people in the bus, you can go, mm, Slicha, slicha, slicha. Uh, but when you step on someone on the bus, you can also say, Oi, slicha. I'm sorry. Lehitraot. See you. It literally means to see each other again. So it's like, to see each other again. Lehitraot. 
Uh, it's also very casual. Beseder. Okay. This is a very, very useful word. You can say it when someone asks you, how are you? Beseder. You can say it to show you understand something. When someone gives you direction, you're like, beseder. Uh, it literally means in order. Like everything's in order. Tov. Fine. Uh, most of the time it means fine. Literally, it means good. A lot like beseder. How are you? Tov. To respond to a direction, like, uh, go that way, please. Tov. Fine, I understand. Allo davar. You're welcome. We use it as, you're welcome, and it literally means, oh, for nothing. Thank you. Oh, allo davar. It was nothing. It's maybe a bit more formal than bevakasha. Most of the times when people say toda, you answer bevakasha. You can also answer allo davar. It's pretty much the same, though bevakasha is a bit more common. Boker tov. Good morning. Boker tov, uh, which literally means good morning, and you obviously use it in the morning. Boker tov. Laila tov. Good night. So, yeah, good night you can say uh, when you leave a party at night, you know, you can say, okay, bye, good night, laila tov. Tsohoraim tovim, good afternoon. Tsohoraim tovim, good afternoon. You can definitely say that, but you don't hear it that often. It literally means good noon. Ma shimcha, what's your name? For a male, it would be ma shimcha. For a female, ma shmech, what is your name? You can also ask, ech uh, kur'im lach, which literally means how are you called? And this is the most common way to ask. Naim lehakir, nice to meet you. Literally, I guess it would mean pleasant. It is pleasant to meet you. And you can say naim lehakir otach, for a woman, or naim lehakir otcha, for a man. A4. Where? Efo Hatachana. Where is the station? Efo is very important. You should memorize this one. Ani mevin. I see. For a woman, it would be Ani mevina. I understand. I see. Ani mevina. Ma hasha'a. What time is it? The literal translation would be, what is the hour? This is how you ask. Slicha, ma hasha'a. Excuse me, what time is it? אפשר בבקשה לקבל? Can I please have? אפשר בבקשה לקבל מים? Can I please have some water? And this would be the same uh, for a male speaker and for a female speaker. אפשר בבקשה לקבל? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? שירותים is restroom. איפה השירותים? Another one to memorize. אני מצטער, I am sorry. אני מצטער, or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. אני מצטערת להפריע, I am sorry to interrupt. כן, yes. You can use it in any way you use yes. Yeah, use it, be positive. לא, no. I like this word, it has a fun sound, and it was my sister's first word. לא, no. בלי. I feel like. Bali. It's two words, Bali. And it means, I feel like, I want. And you can also use it as a negative. Bali glida. I feel like ice cream. I want ice cream. Lo Bali lalechet lebet asefer. I don't feel like going to school. So it's very useful. Children use it a lot, but grown-ups use it too. Dai. Enough. Stop. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it's harmless. It means uh, enough or um, stop. When someone is like bugging you, poking you, like, die, stop it, enough. Yeah. Kama ze ole? How much is it? Kama ze ole? How much is it? How much does it cost? Me ule. Awesome. Great. I guess maybe the Hebrew equivalent of the word awesome. Uh, it's meule. The masculine form is meule, and the feminine is meula. Like how faaz dot meula. This show is awesome. It's great. Echayat yul, ayam meule. How was the trip? It was meule. 
Great, awesome. 15 questions you should know. So, let's start. Me'efo ata? Where are you from? Me'efo ata? Where are you from? And if you want to ask a female, it's me'efo at. Ani mi Tel Aviv. I am from Tel Aviv. Ben kama ata? How old are you? Ben kama ata? How old are you? For a female, it would be bat kama at. I'm not gonna answer that one. Ma shimcha? What's your name? Ma shimcha? What is your name? For a female, ma shmech. A more common way of asking that would be ech koreim lecha, or for a female, ech koreim lach, which literally mean how are you called? Ma shlomcha? How are you? Ma shlomcha? Or ma shlomech for a woman, and this is how are you? How do you feel? Ma ze? What's this? Maze, what is this? Maze. Some people use it uh, as what? Like what did you say? Maze. But uh, most of the times it's used uh, when you want to know what the thing is. Excuse me. Maze. Ma amarta. What did you say? Ma amarta. What did you say? And for a female, ma amart. Lo amarti klum. I didn't say anything. Efo ata oved? Where do you work? Efo ata oved? Where do you work? And for a female, Efo at ovedet? Efo hashirutim? Where is the bathroom? Memorize this one. Efo hashirutim? Where is the bathroom? Excuse me. Efo hashirutim? Efo ata gar? Where do you live? Efo ata gar, where do you live? Or for female, efo at gara. Matai yom hahuledet shelcha? When is your birthday? Matai yom hahuledet shelcha? When is your birthday? For female, matai yom hahuledet shelach. Kama zman atalomed ivrit? How long have you been studying Hebrew? Kama zman atalomed ivrit? How long have you been studying Hebrew? For a female, כמה זמן את לומדת עברית? איפה למדת עברית? Where did you learn Hebrew? איפה למדת עברית? Where did you study Hebrew? Or for a female, איפה למדת עברית? That's an easy question. HebrewPod101.com היית בישראל? Have you been to Israel? היית בישראל? Have you been to Israel? For a female, היית בישראל? Well, have you? אתה אוהב אוכל ישראלי? Do you like Israeli food? אתה אוהב אוכל ישראלי? Do you like Israeli food? And for a female, את אוהבת אוכל ישראלי? איפה אתה רוצה לבקר? Where do you want to visit? איפה אתה רוצה לבקר? Where do you want to visit? Or for a female, איפה את רוצה לבקר? Must know expressions of agreeing and disagreeing with somebody in Hebrew, of course. אני מסכים איתך לחלוטין. I couldn't agree with you more. אני מסכים איתך לחלוטין. I couldn't agree with you more. Yes, so like when you really want to emphasize your opinion is the same as somebody else's and like you feel very strongly and passionately about it, it's like, I couldn't agree more. I agree with you completely, totally, 100%. Of course. Of course. Of course. Um, so if somebody asks you something or he wants to hear your agreement about something, you'll say, oh yes, yes, you're absolutely right, of course, completely. אני מניח, I guess so. Mm, אני מניח, I guess so. So, the literal tra- translation of like the verb להניח, אני מניח, um, it's like, it's assume. So, it's kind of like saying, instead of I guess so, it's like, I assume so. 
That's the literal translation. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. It's like you took the words out of, out of my mouth. You know, I was just going to say that. We're thinking the same thing, you know, great minds. <laughs> Ken, atatsodek. Yes, you're right. Ken, atatsodek. Yes, you're right. This is often like if somebody gives you an advice and you know that their advice is solid. So it's like, yeah, you know, you're right. Sometimes advice, advices are hard to follow. So sometimes you will see, you will say it like, yeah, I, I know, you're right. And sometimes like, yeah, I know, you know? Atatoe. You're wrong. Atatoe. You're wrong. So this is like very abrupt and kind of a harsh way to tell somebody that he's wrong. Um, but I would say that's probably the most common, commonly used, at least in Israel. People are quite, um, you know, they're out there and they speak their minds. And if they don't agree with you, they'll just tell you straight to the face, you know, like, you're wrong. Lonnie really. I don't think so. Lonnie really. I don't think so. So it's like, if you're maybe 90% sure about something that it's not, or you just, people, some, somebody asks you something and you don't, like, you don't feel it, you just say, I don't think so. Lonir Eli, which literally translates to, I don't see so. Ulai, maybe. Ulai, maybe. This was like one of my favorite words when I was a little kid. Like people would ask me things and I would just say, Ulai. <laughs> Uh, which just literally is maybe. Ani lo maskim. Lo. I don't agree. No. Ani lo maskim. Lo. I don't agree. No. So when you say ani lo maskim in Hebrew, it can either mean I don't agree or I won't allow it. Um, it depends to who you're talking to. Like I would maybe say it to my dog, and I'll tell him, Ani lo maskima, and then he'll just stop doing what he's doing. Um, but if you're not agreeing with somebody's opinion, you can also say, Ani lo maskim, mm -mm, lo. Ani maskim, I agree. Ani maskim, I agree. I don't know, I seem to use that much less than don't agree. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then, as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations. Or, even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations, just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So, start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. 
That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words, and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster, at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. Today, we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Hobbies. Hobbies. Tachbivim. What are your hobbies? Lesachek shachmat. To play chess. When I was in elementary school, we actually had a checkmate lesson, chess lesson. Kshani aiti bebet sefer esodi, hayali shiur shachmat. Yeah, that didn't go very well for me. Never won. Lesof bulim. To collect stamps. Lesof bulim. My father had a stamp collection. Abba Shali Asaf Bulim. And then he gave me the uh, collection and I obviously lost it. So, Liglosh <laughs> Ba'internet. To surf the net. Is that a hobby? It's more like a, a, a way of life, I'd say. You surf the net too much. Ata Golesh Ba'internet, you tear me die. Lesachek Poker. To play poker. Okay, uh, the next hobby is to play poker. And this is a common hobby in Israel. I went over to a friend of mine to play poker. Halachti lechaver sheli lesachek poker. 
I actually never played poker. I don't even know how to do that. צילום, פוטוגרפי. I always wanted to take a photography class. תמיד רציתי ללכת לחוג צילום. I never did that though. Kind of lazy. Fruits, פירות. A single is pre. So, fruits, exciting. תפוח, apple. Green apples are my favorite. תפוחים ירוקים הם התפוחים האהובים עליי. אבטיח, watermelon. אבטיח, ה-plural uh, is אבטיחים. Mm, ביפן יש אבטיחים מרובעים. Japan has square watermelons. It's true. Google it. תאנה, fig. I actually love figs. Uh, I have a friend who can't eat them because she says that their insides look like worms. Sorry, that's a picture you won't be able to get out of your head. לסבתא שלי היה עץ תאנה. My grandmother had a fig tree. מישמש, apricot. The word is מישמש, but Israelis usually say מישמיש. קניתי בשוק קילו מישמישים. I bought one kilo of apricots in the market. דובדבן, cherry. This event was the cherry on my cream. האירוע הזה היה הדובדבן שבקצפת. Rooms. Uh, what can you possibly say about rooms? Uh, we're going to find out together. חדר שינה. Bedroom. Room in Hebrew is חדר. So, uh, חדר שינה is literally sleeping room. חדר השינה נמצא בקצה המסדרון. The bedroom is in the end of the hall. מטבח. Kitchen. מטבח, kitchen, my favorite part of every house. Unfortunately, המטבח שלי קטן מאוד. My kitchen is very small. You can barely move in it. שירותים, bathroom. סליחה, איפה השירותים? Excuse me, where's the bathroom? That's an important sentence to learn in Hebrew. Memorize it. Salon, living room, uh, where you have all your parties. Salon. יש לי ציור של פיקאסו בסלון. I have a Picasso painting in my living room. חדר אוכל. Dining room. חדר אוכל, uh, which literally means food room. Uh, that's way more fun than dining room, food room. אל תיכנס לחדר האוכל, נשברה שם צלחת. Don't go in the dining room. I broke a plate in there. Colors, צבעים. Let's start. חום, brown. Okay, brown is a nice warm color. Uh, my eyes are brown. העיניים שלי חומות. אפור, gray. There's this song in Hebrew. The gray today is very gray. האפור היום אפור מאוד. It's poetic. This is why I like it. אדום, red. אני לא יכולה לסבול יין אדום. I can't stand red wine. I can't even stand the smell. That's a true story. צהוב, yellow. חמניות הן צהובות. Sunflowers are yellow. ירוק, green. לאימא שלי יש עיניים ירוקות. My mother has green eyes. Months of the year, חודשי השנה. ינואר, January. יום ההולדת שלי הוא בינואר. My birthday is January. מרץ, March. מזג האוויר מתחיל להתחמם במרץ. The weather starts to get warm in March, at least in Israel. Juni, June. Juni is the last month of school. June is the last month of school. August, August. In August, Tel Aviv is like a rock. In August, Tel Aviv is like a soup. Okay, because it's so unbelievably hot and humid, you feel like you're swimming in soup when you walk down the street. Yeah, <laughs> that's maybe not the best time to visit Israel. October. October. Lel kol akdoshim chal be-October. Halloween is in October. Halloween obviously is not an Israeli holiday, but in Israel we do celebrate Purim, which is a Jewish holiday in which you dress up and have fun. It's a great holiday. Look it up. Shalom. שלום. מה שלומך? בסדר, תודה. שלום, קוראים לי טל. שלום, אני יעל. 
נעים מאוד. נעים מאוד גם לי. ברוך הבא. כנס בבקשה. תודה. הנה מתנה קטנה ממני. בבקשה. תודה רבה. בבקשה. אאו. סליחה. מה? כף הרגל שלי. או, oh, סליחה. ערב טוב. שלום. אפשר לקבל תפריט? ודאי. סליחה, אפשר כוס מים בבקשה? מיד. סליחה, אפשר להזמין? כן. Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at hebrewpod101.com. In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? בחנות הספרים, אישה שואלת משהו את המוכר. איזה ספר האישה מעוניינת לראות? סלח לי, הייתי רוצה לראות את הספר שעל המדף ההוא. איזה ספר תרצי? זה בנושא מכוניות. רגע אחד בבקשה. זה? כן, בדיוק. בבקשה. איזה ספר האישה מעוניינת לראות? בחנות הספרים, אישה שואלת משהו את המוכר. איזה ספר האישה מעוניינת לראות? סלח לי, הייתי רוצה לראות את הספר שעל המדף ההוא. איזה ספר תרצי? זה בנושא מכוניות. רגע אחד בבקשה. זה? כן, בדיוק. בבקשה. איש מתקשר למרפאה. עד איזו שעה הוא צריך להגיע למרפאה? שלום, איך אפשר לעזור לך? באיזה שעה אתם סוגרים היום? אנחנו סוגרים בשעה שש, אבל בבקשה תגיע לפני חמש וחצי. בסדר, תודה. עד איזו שעה הוא צריך להגיע למרפאה? איש מתקשר למרפאה. עד איזו שעה הוא צריך להגיע למרפאה? שלום, איך אפשר לעזור לך? באיזה שעה אתם סוגרים היום? אנחנו סוגרים בשעה שש, אבל בבקשה תגיע לפני חמש וחצי. בסדר, תודה. ילד קורא מהיומן שלו. מהו הדבר הראשון שהילד עשה היום? המזג אוויר היה נהדר היום. הלכתי לשחות בבריכה אחר הצהריים, והלכתי לראות סרט בערב. גם למדתי כל הבוקר. היה יום לא רע. מהו הדבר הראשון שהילד עשה היום? ילד קורא מהיומן שלו. מהו הדבר הראשון שהילד עשה היום? המזג אוויר היה נהדר היום. הלכתי לשחות בבריכה אחר הצהריים, והלכתי לראות סרט בערב. גם למדתי כל הבוקר. היה יום לא רע. אישה ואיש מביטים בתצלום. באיזה תצלום הם מביטים? זה תצלום של קבוצת הכדורגל שהבן שלך בא, לא? מי הוא הבן שלך? זה? אה, 
הוא הכי גבוה. כן, הוא אפילו יותר גבוה ממני. באיזה תצלום הם מביטים? אישה ואיש מביטים בתצלום. באיזה תצלום הם מביטים? זה תצלום של קבוצת הכדורגל שהבן שלך בה, לא? מי הוא הבן שלך? זה? אה, הוא הכי גבוה. כן, הוא אפילו יותר גבוה ממני. גבר ואישה מנהלים שיחה. מתי הם הולכים לקבל עיסוי? ידיד שלי בדיוק פתח מכון עיסוי חדש. מכון עיסוי? אני רוצה ללכת. יש לך זמן ביום שבת? בשבת אני עסוק. מה לגבי יום ראשון? המקום סגור ביום ראשון. מה לגבי יום שישי? טוב. מתי הם הולכים לקבל עיסוי? גבר ואישה מנהלים שיחה. מתי הם הולכים לקבל עיסוי? ידיד שלי בדיוק פתח מכון עיסוי חדש. מכון עיסוי? אני רוצה ללכת. יש לך זמן ביום שבת? בשבת אני עסוק. מה לגבי יום ראשון? המקום סגור ביום ראשון. מה לגבי יום שישי? טוב. אטריות מנה חמה. אינסטנט נודלס, which we uh, usually call it מנה חמה, after the brand. I mean, it's not always noodles, but it's always bad for you. It's actually my sister's favorite food. אחותי ממש אוהבת מנה חמה. My sister really loves instant noodles. ארוחות קפואות, frozen meals. כשאין לי זמן, אני מחממת לי ארוחה קפואה. When I don't have time, I heat up a frozen meal. You gotta do what you gotta do. בשר מעובד, processed meat. היום כולם יודעים שבשר מעובד הוא לא בריא. Today everybody knows that processed meat is unhealthy. מרגרינה, margarine. בעוגיות האלה יש מרגרינה. These cookies have margarine in them. יאק. משקאות אנרגיה. Energy drinks. Because I think it's gross, but people do that, so... הוא אוהב לערבב משקאות אנרגיה עם אלכוהול. He likes to mix energy drinks with alcohol. Right, it's a common combination. ממתקים. Candy. אסור לך לאכול ממתקים לפני ארוחת הערב. You're not allowed to eat candy before dinner. Oops. פופקורן למיקרוגל. מייקרווייב פופקורן. That's so sad because I love it. קניתי שלוש חבילות של פופקורן למיקרוגל. I bought three packs of microwave popcorn. I don't care, it's unhealthy. Chips. Potato chips. אני אקח צ'יפס וקולה, בבקשה. I'll have french fries and a coke, please. Actually, I'm not sure what you mean by potato chips, but when Israelis say chips, we mean french fries. When talking about crisps or whatever, we call it by the brand name. We don't really have a name for that. Kotle chazir, bacon, though we usually say bacon. הרבה ישראלים לא אוכלים בייקון, כי זה לא כשר. A lot of Israelis don't eat bacon, because it's not kosher. שתייה מוגזת, סודה. הפסקתי לקנות שתייה מוגזת, זה לא בריא. I stopped buying soda, it's unhealthy. Fun fact, when Israelis say soda, we mean um, bubbly water. No flavor, no sugar. But if you want to drink something like uh, Coke or Fanta or whatever, we would call it by the brand name, or Shtia Mugezet. New Year's resolutions. You know, those decisions we make every year so that we can feel guilty afterwards when we don't follow through? Yeah. So let's learn 10 of these. Let's start. L'echol 
בריא, to eat healthy. I make this decision once a week, and then I go celebrate it with pizza. לבלות יותר זמן עם המשפחה. To spend more time with the family. This is always a good resolution. להוריד במשקל, to lose weight. We also say לרזות, which means to lose weight, but it literally means to get thinner. לרזות. להפסיק לעשן, to quit smoking. My best advice for you is don't start, but if you've started, it's never too late to stop. להתעמל בקביעות, to exercise regularly. You really should do it, and you don't have to do something boring like running. It can be something fun. לחסוך כסף, to save money. Well, when you learn Hebrew, it's a bit hard to say לחסוך כסף, but you should try it, come on. Practice. ללמוד משהו חדש, to learn something new. Like hula hoopy. No, I'm kidding. Likro yoter. To read more. Hashana hichlateti likro yoter. This year, I decided to read more. We do it a lot, don't we? We're like, yeah, I'm, I'm on vacation. I'm going to read so much and then spend most of your time with your phone. Lishtot pachot. To drink less. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Lilmod ivrit. עם עבריתפוד101.com To learn Hebrew with Hebrewpod101.com I see you're doing that already, so good for you keeping up with your New Year's resolution. 10 ways to remember Hebrew words. אני לומדת על השורשים של מילים ואיך מילים שונות קשורות אחת לשנייה. I learn about the roots of the words and how different words are related to each other. אני לומדת על השורשים של מילים ואיך מילים שונות קשורות אחת לשנייה. I learn about the roots of the words and how different words are related to each other. In Hebrew, we have something called a root system. Words from similar fields of concept or from similar source would have a lot of basics, um, the same basic continents. So for instance, the word airplane is matos, and the word flight is tisa, and the word for the verb flying is latus. So you can hear there are slight changes in the words, and sometimes it's a verb and sometimes it's a noun, but those two letters of t and s are still there, and that kind of makes it easier to remember. אני מדברת כמה שאני יכולה עם דוברי שפת אם של השפה. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. אני מדברת כמה שאני יכולה עם דוברי שפת אם של השפה. I speak as often as possible with native speakers of the language. This is very important because native speakers can, you know, fix your little mistakes and your little bugs and maybe teach you some new words or some modern words or some slang that you might not learn otherwise, especially some rough slang. <laughs> and that makes your, your Hebrew speaking much more natural. than just studying it from a book or from a teacher. אני מנסה להשתמש במילה חדשה במשפט פשוט, כך שאני לומדת משפטים שלמים, ולא רק מילים בודדות. I try to use the new word in a simple sentence, so I learn whole phrases, not just individual words. אני מנסה להשתמש במילה חדשה במשפט פשוט, כך שאני לומדת משפט שלם, ולא רק מילה בודדת. I try to use the new word in a simple sentence, so I study a whole phrase and not just an individual word. When you just learn a word, you might not be able to actually use it when you want to, when you find the need to use that word, even though you know it somewhere in the back of your head. But when you create like a situation in your mind in which you will use this word, or um, a phrase that's very, very useful for that specific word, then you kind of have it more handy in your memory to pull it out whenever you actually need to. אני מנסה לחשוב בעברית כך שזה יעשה טבעי לתהליך החשיבה שלי. I try to think in Hebrew so it becomes natural to my thought process. אני מנסה לחשוב בעברית כך שזה יעשה טבעי לתהליך החשיבה שלי. I try to think in Hebrew so it becomes a natural part of my thinking process. I remember years ago when I just studied English and I was just a little girl, all of a sudden I found myself like 
thinking in English and dreaming in English. And that's a really important thing to do also because when you think it, you can speak it. If you don't think before you speak, then nothing is going to come out. It's going to come out very like, you know, if you think about stuff, not just before you're speaking, but just in general, making conversations in your head, that would really help you use it in a very, very fluent way. אני מקשיבה לשירים ומשננת את המילים. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. אני מקשיבה לשירים ומשננת את המילים. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. This is like one of my favorite ways to actually learn new language and learn new vocabulary and new sentences. It's just a fun way and there's something about a song that you won't forget so easily, like just speaking. It's a song, it's stuck in your head and you want to sing it. It comes like from somewhere in your soul. And when you memorize the word, which is something that I love doing, I love knowing the lyrics of songs, then it just makes you feel oh, like so much more comfortable. And I did that with French and I actually did that with, you know, with German too. And I studied quite a bit of German just, you know, just from German music. So that's kind of fun. אני מקשרת מילים חדשות עם מילים שנשמעות דומה בשפת האם שלי. I associate new words with words that sound similar in my native language. אני מקשרת מילים חדשות עם מילים שנשמעות דומה בשפת האם שלי. I associate new words with similar sounding words in my own native language. So this is also a good way to remember individual words. And to be honest, it kind of sometimes create really funny situations or very funny associations. It's really, really good, you know, because if something makes you laugh, you're not going to forget it. If something makes you smile, you're going to remember it better than just something that you repeated over and over. אני משתמשת בחזרות. קוראת, כותבת, וחוזרת על מילים שוב ושוב. I use repetition, reading, writing, and speaking words over and over again. אני משתמשת בחזרות. קוראת, כותבת, וחוזרת על מילים שוב ושוב. I use repetition, reading, writing, and speaking words over and over again. So sometimes, you know, you can't escape it. That's something that you just kind of have to do, you know? You have to keep repeating stuff. Um, to memorize them, to remember them, especially when it comes to grammar. Sometimes there's no other way, and repeating is the best way to do it, I guess. I watch Israeli TV shows and movies with English subtitles to expose myself to everyday vocabulary and a natural speaking flow. I watch Israeli TV shows and movies with English subtitles בשביל להיחשף לאוצר מילים יומיומי ולקצב דיבור טבעי. I watch Israeli TV shows and movies to expose myself to daily vocabulary and a natural speaking flow. This is how I studied English. Like, what I studied in school hardly even helped me. I used to watch English TV all the time with Hebrew subtitles, and now I'm doing the same with a different language as well. So it's really important just watching TV because when people are going to speak with you and they see, oh, this is not your native language and you, maybe you're struggling, they might like dumb down the way they speak to you and speak slower in very simple words. But when you're watching TV, you're seeing how people actually speak. And then you also have the opportunity to see that translation below and you can compare what they're saying with what you're reading and what you know already, and quite quickly you would expand your vocabulary and significantly improve the naturality of your, of your speaking. אני מנסה לקרוא ספרים פשוטים בעברית ולתרגל קריאה ללא ניקוד בשביל לשפר את יכולות הקריאה שלי. I try to read simple books in Hebrew and practice reading without ניקוד to improve my reading ability. אני מנסה לקרוא ספרים פשוטים בעברית ולתרגל קריאה ללא ניקוד בשביל לשפר את יכולות הקריאה שלי. I try to read simple books in Hebrew and also practice reading without ניקוד to improve my reading ability. So, reading without ניקוד is something that you really have to practice and to be honest, most places you will go, there won't be any ניקוד at all. People use ניקוד today for kids' books and well, poetry books, 
even if it's like simple poetry, high poetry, they always use Nikud no matter what. But in regular books and street signs and menus, um, you'll never see it. As much as you can, try reading without it. And starting with Nikud, slowly progressing to books without it, that's something that's really important because otherwise you'll always find yourself struggling reading stuff around you. אני לומדת עברית עם hebrewpod101.com בשביל ללמוד משפטים מודרניים בעברית עם מילים שימושיות ליום יום. I learn Hebrew with hebrewpod101.com to learn modern phrases and actual usable words. אני לומדת עברית עם hebrewpod101.com בשביל ללמוד משפטים מודרניים בעברית עם מילים שימושיות ליום יום. I learn Hebrew with hebrewpod101.com to learn modern phrases and actual usable words. So, yeah, you know, Hebrew Pod gives you the opportunity to listen to how Israeli people actually speak and what they actually say, whereas if you study in a classroom or from a textbook, most often some of the words and phrases there would be kind of archaic and not something that people really use. So when you talk to people, they would know, oh, yeah, like, he studied in an ulpan, he studied in, like, from a textbook. And if you sound more naturally, and you speak in more modern phrases, they would think, oh yeah, like this guy has been living here, he's talking to Israeli people, you know, he knows some stuff. Happy words, yay! Sameach, happy. Sameach, happy. Mi shetov lo vesameach kaf imcha. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So obviously there's also a Hebrew translation to this song, and I remember it from kindergarten, and I didn't even know that it was in English originally. Um, I guess I found out somehow, but yeah, you know, I think they have it in, like, every language. Mi shetov lo vesameach kaf imcha? Yefeife. Beautiful. Yefeife. Beautiful. Hadira shalem pashut yefeifia. Their apartment is absolutely beautiful. Obviously, the word yefefe, beautiful, comes from the word yefe, pretty. It's so pretty that you have to repeat the word twice. Like, is it yefe? No, it's yefefe. Lehov, to love. Lehov, to love. Ani ohev shokolad veugot gvina. I love chocolate and cheesecakes. This example sentence is also from like a Hebrew song for kids and it's a very famous song about a kid who sings about all the things that he loves and he's saying Ani ohev shokolad veugot gvina He loves chocolate and cheesecakes and he loves food and he loves his sister and his mom and his dad but most of all he loves himself. Nehedar, <laughs> great. Nehedar. Great. איך היה הסרט? אוי, הוא היה פשוט נהדר. How was the movie? Oh, it was simply wonderful. נהדר can be great, it can be wonderful, um, it can be magnificent, and it comes from the word הדר, which means glamour. נהדר, magnificent. נמרץ, lively. נמרץ. Lively. יש לנו אחד במשרד, והוא כל הזמן כל כך נמרץ. We have a guy at our office, and he's always so lively. We all know that one guy, right? אדיב. Kind. אדיב. Kind. חשוב להיות אדיבים לזולת. It's important to be kind to one another. You know, like on the bus, if you see a pregnant lady or an older man, like, and they're standing up and you're sitting down, just stand up for them, let, have, let them have a seat. That's a very kind thing to do. Um, and it's very adiv. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.